Hello everybody, welcome back live and on the air inside the headset Wednesday night edition as we're just going to roll east from Chattanooga about and go right up 75 and we're just going to be right there at Cleveland High School. Going to talk to the head coach of the Cleveland Blue Raiders, head coach Chandler Tigard. How you doing tonight, coach? I'm good, Stork. How you doing, buddy? Doing well. Cleveland Blue Raiders sitting at 3-0. and We were there this past Friday night. We put the highlights up. Stork Vision was on the road. Came away a big winner, 51-23. to Talk about the game, Coach. I'm curious to see what you thought of the game. I thought it was pretty exciting. Uh, we went on the 22 to nothing run they went on a 23 nothing run and uh we had a 29 nothing run that doesn't happen very often in a high school game no and uh got some good uh got some good trick plays involved uh walker valley pulled that one there in the uh to to, to get the first uh score and uh, uh just a a lot of good football great atmosphere you had a heck of a light show and um <laughs> <laughs> we we uh we had a good time. I mean, we got a we got our power cut twice, but uh, uh you know, all in all, good. Bro- we we had a we had a great time, and uh, Walker Valley brought the people. Yeah, so it was a big crowd. So I told you it was a big rivalry game down here. So uh, that was a big win. We've been waiting a year for a little payback on that one. Um, yeah, I think the score could have been a lot worse if we wouldn't have thrown it to the other team as much. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we're happy to get a win. Now we're starting region play this week uh, with Farragut coming to town. What did you – I mean, you know, you, you get that video, and, yeah, you win, but you did you did see some mistakes. What jumps out at you that's quick correction that you, you think uh, the Blue Raiders can get – you know, we, we can fix that? Yeah, well, in the second quarter, you know, we had three turnovers. So we had, um, you know, some interceptions. That's, your, on, that's, your, that's they, yours. You own them turnovers. Don't ever forget that. Penalties and turnovers, coaches own. So that's yeah, yours. that's what I was going to say. So, so so turnovers was the first thing. Then we had a bunch of penalties, especially on their sideline, you know, running out that zone of their bench. So in the second half, we kind of changed some things there um, and didn't have as many penalties and took care of the ball. Then we had some big plays. You know, I think the big uh, the big 50-yard pass on third down kind of broke it back wide open, um, you know, when Casey McGowan threw it to Jan Smith. And then, uh, you know, next thing you know, we're back on top and got a punt block right after that. And then, you know, it goes on to be a, a 29 nothing uh, run there in the third and fourth quarter. Well, we just had Hall of Fame coach Gary Rankin on, and the biggest thing he said is, you know, and he points it out, and, and you know, if you're setting at 489 wins and you've done what he's done, you know, you know that he's telling you gospel. But he said, you know, the depth, right now you need to be building depth. Did you feel like, you know, with your win, you know, beating them 51-23 on Stork Vision, that, you know, you was able to get some depth reps in or, you know, or – what, what did you feel like there? Was you able to get some quality in and, you know, some time yeah, in with this uh, guy? A, a little bit. I mean, we're finding more kids here and there. But, honestly, we just don't have the numbers. I mean, we're rolling out there with 49, 50 players. And, uh, you know, in, in our region, every other team we're going to play, for the most part, except for Bradley, has 120. You know, so depth-wise, uh, we're going to be thin no matter what we do. So we just got to try to survive there and be able to use as many kids as we can and different personnel groupings and, you know, just try to get through each Friday with who's healthy and who's available and make a plan, and, and hopefully it works on Friday night. Boy, Farragut, not the same Farragut that I normally see uh, setting at 0-3. This might be a good time for you. You know, I mean, you know, you'll as long as you can go out and stay healthy and execute, maybe they're a little bit down. I don't know, but I would not take any game lightly. But, you know, I, I don't know who they've played. So maybe they was close yeah, in every they, one of them. Um, maybe they are just starting to get it together. They're dangerous. They can, you know, they've got some, some – ta- I don't know. I haven't seen them on film. Tell me tell me what's dangerous uh, about Far- Farragut. What, what, what scares you? What's keeping you up? Uh, well, what keeps you up is that now everybody tells us how good we are and we're ranked fifth in the state and it's the highest ranking in 6A in school history and all these good things, right? But, I mean, Farragut beat – Maribel last year, the last week of the season, when they had uh, they weren't even in the playoffs. So I mean, they can beat you if you don't take them serious. Uh, they've got two really good receivers. Um, you know, one of them, Landon Collins, got a bunch of Division One offers. So that's a little scary. Uh, they also played a tough schedule, so they had to go to Dobbins Bennett, which is a hard place to play, and then they've lost at Powell, 
and they lost against Knoxville West. So they played three good teams. Uh, so they're sitting at 0 and 3, but I mean, they might be one of the best, you know, 0 and 3 teams in the state. Yeah. And then they're well coached and, and do a good job. And so you just got to take everything seriously. And, um, you know, they they don't have, they're not as big up front as they've been in years past. Uh, but, you know, if we have 180 yards of penalties and three turnovers again, you know, that's not, you're not going to win a lot of games doing that. Well, and you, you answered my question. They have, they play Knox West. So, I mean, you know, not many times. I mean, you don't want to go play Knox West. Not right now. Nobody does. So I mean, uh, you know, they played some. They played some teams, and so uh, you're going to be in a tough battle on Friday night. Injury wise, that I didn't see anybody, you know, get hurt. But you know, I saw a little bit of cramp. And uh, the most impressive player was your your your, your big defensive lineman, and I hope he is getting some looks. But uh, uh, he can cause some havoc. You just need three more of him. I mean, and if you had three yeah. more of him, then you'd be there, Coach. Well, if we had three more of him, then we're going to be <laughs> be unstoppable. So we're uh, we're doing really good on defense. I mean, Walker Valley only had 140 total yards. Um, you know, Clinton only had 23 yards in the second half against us earlier in the season. I mean, so defensively, we're doing really well. And um, you know, it, it AJ AJ Westfield, who you're talking about, he's a he's a junior D lineman. Um, and he's he's got 28 tackles, 15 tackles for loss, and five sacks already in three games. So, I mean, he's doing a really good job, and, and a lot of those defensive guys are. So we're not just offense. I mean, everybody likes to talk about our offense and how fast we go and all these things, but I think the defense is really a big difference this year. Oh, I think, you know, your defense might – might get you, you know, might get you further down the road than you think in, in, in other games that you're going to have to play because that might be your chances of keeping you in that ball game later on. And you know the one I'm talking about, but you know, playing sound defense in that game and playing mistake free and keeping the ball in front of you, and even if you give up the one or two yards, you can do that, but you just can't give up three every, every time because that's what they want, you know. They want to get you in a little rhythm, and then they and then they bust you for a big one, and then you're sitting there with what just happened, you know. You know who I'm talking yeah. about. But anyway. Yeah, we got some big ones coming down the road, so we just got to get through this one. Uh, you know, the Cleveland Blue Raiders haven't started 4-0 and in 16 years. So that's the goal is hopefully we're 4-0 Friday night and feeling good, and then, you know, we'll move on from there. Well, and yeah, and then those kids for the 2024, we started the season off 4-0. Now it sets the tone for 2025 and so on and so forth. So you're, you're heading yeah. in the right direction, Coach. You know what you're doing. You just got to, you know, you you, you got to you got your way about going about it. So you're right, you know. Uh, you set some. You set some of those records that you call. You know, at at Blackman, you did some there, and so you're just continuing. Like you said, uh, been a long time since this has happened. Been a long time since that's happened. So, paying attention yep. to what's going on, just as far as the progression of this 2024 team, it's important. It's important to the kids. Yeah, this has a very similar feel to that second year of Blackman Stork. So, uh, very similar. To, but the difference is, I guess, between the two teams is this year we're, our defense is just really strong. Our run defense is really strong, and we run the ball a lot better than we did uh, back then. You know, we had JB and Ben and all those receivers. But here we're, we're just a little bit different. It's a little more physicality down here, and I think our kids play really hard. And, um, you know, it's a tough region that we play in, so we got to start, start region play 1-0. And, uh, you know, it'll be a big one on Friday. It's probably going to be storming and raining and all that. So there'll be plenty of adversity and wet ball. We've been working on that all week. So, um, you know, it'll be a good game on Friday. So we'll see what happens. Coach, good luck Friday night. We wish you the best of luck. And thanks again for being on Inside the Headset. Hey, thanks, Stork. And really appreciate you guys coming down. Everybody loves having y'all. And, um, you know, you're more than welcome anytime. We can do that every year. Take care.